In this video, we take a more detailed look at utility system software. So utility system software is a subcategory of system software and often sits alongside your operating system. Lots of operating systems come with utility software pre-installed, but you can also buy them from dedicated vendors. Depending what definition you look at and where you read it, some people argue different types of software aren't utility software and some are. But in essence, it is designed to keep your computer safe and keep it running efficiently. It provides you with useful tools for management of files and applications. In essence, you can kind of think of utility software a bit like an MOT or service for a car. The car itself is the operating system, but unless you maintain it regularly and look after it, it eventually starts to break and slow down. A similar thing can be said of a computer. Yes, the operating system will allow you to run the computer, but without utility software to protect your computer with firewalls and antivirus, to clean it up, create backups and run defragmentation, your computer can start to lose performance. We're just going to take a look at a few typical pieces of utility system software. The first is encryption. Now, the idea here is these are utilities which use an algorithm to scramble plain text into cipher text. The text can then only be decrypted and made readable again with a key. So here we can see a simple illustration where something's been written in plain text, maybe using a word processor. An encryption utility or algorithm is then applied to the file and then the encrypted message is sent. This obviously doesn't prevent the message from being intercepted in transit, but it does mean the message is unreadable if indeed it is intercepted. At the other end, a decryption key is used to turn the message back into plain text. Defragmentation utilities reorganise files on a hard disk. It puts the fragments of files back together and collects free space. This reduces the movement of the read-write head across the surface of disks and this speeds up access to files. Solid state drives should not be defragmented. It's unnecessary because they've got no moving parts and they can access files very quickly already. It actually reduces their lifespan due to the way those devices actually work. Defragmentation typically includes taking all the fragments of a file, which you can see in this illustration. It takes them and puts them into a single file towards the end of a disk, reorganizing those fragments and putting them back together again. Once it's done, it's able to free up sufficient space at the start of the disk and then move the files back to the front. The result is that all the files are continuous, one after the other, starting at the beginning of the disk and all the free space is collected towards the end. Compression utilities reduce the size of a file so it takes up less disk space and is quicker to download over the internet. Compressed files must be extracted before they can be read. So typically we might consider a video on YouTube like the one you're watching now. It needs to be compressed because you want to watch that video in real time. You need it to be streamed and there would just be too much data, especially if the video was high quality. Now, depending on the algorithm used, data is either lost during this compression, which reduces the quality of an image or sound, for example, JPEG, or the data is represented in a different way using binary, retaining the original data in a new compressed format, for example, with a zip file. If we look at a very simplistic idea of how this might work, you can see in this illustration, we've got eight ones, we've got eight zeros, we've got eight ones, and finally we've got eight zeros. Now we don't actually need to store every single bit. Instead, what we could store is the number of ones and the number of zeros. So here we've got eight ones followed by eight zeros, followed by eight ones, followed by eight zeros. As long as we know that we started with ones, and then we changed every time the bit state changed, then it's very easy to uncompress this data back into its original format. 
The first number eight means we need eight ones. The second number eight means that's followed by eight zeros and so on and so forth. It is very easy to reverse this process. As a result, we've stored significantly less data. In the case of this simple example, we've actually halved the number of data we're storing.